I've been looking to buy a electric motorcycle for some time. I always liked the Harley Livewire, but it was 30 grand. And I think it was 2021, they rebranded it and it became the Livewire One. So Harley just broke the electric motorcycles off into their own brand. So I pulled the trigger, drove to Harley Davidson in Cleveland, which is the closest place I could buy one. And they had one in stock. So I pulled the trigger and bought the 2022 Livewire 1. And again, I had to go to Cleveland to pick it up. I learned that within that first thousand miles or at a thousand miles, you're supposed to get it serviced. There's some gear oil that needs replaced. It's a new engine. And I assume they're protecting against any metal shavings or something that's in there. And I was a little surprised because my Tesla doesn't have any oil that I need to service, but this Harley does. It doesn't need it again until 20,000 miles. But within the first 30 days, a piece of trim fell off and was damaged. It was replaced. But when it fell off, I realized that it's just stuck on the side of the motorcycle with double-sided tape. But it got replaced. So I was mentioning those things because this review is really about the Stinger 112 XL trailer. But since I had to get it serviced, I took the opportunity to do a range test with the Stinger trailer and my Harley loaded to see how much range I would lose. Similar to how I had done videos on this channel, towing my small tab trailer and then my solar trailer. You can go back and watch those if you'd like. So I'm going to talk about the Stinger trailer in a couple areas that could be improved. But overall, don't get the wrong impression. I love the trailer. So the Stinger trailer took about three months to get here. It's made up in Toronto, I believe. Uh, but it finally came in just in time, right as I was hitting that thousand mile mark. I hooked it up and towed it back to Cleveland to get it serviced. One thing I noticed is that that front wheel chalk shifts left and right. There's a little less than an inch play. The problem was that even if I had it perfectly centered, loaded the bike and strapped it down, over time during the trip, that would shift left or right. And so it would actually sit sideways and it was a little concerning. Additionally, because the straps were equally tightened, when it shifts, one side gets looser and the other side gets tighter. So it's not ideal. Uh, that wheel chalk should be centered. So a 380 pound trailer, a 560 pound Harley Livewire being towed, ended up getting me around 370 watt hours per mile. Not towing, it would be around 280 watt hours per mile if it's not real windy and cold climate and all those factors so it did pretty good a lot better than a bigger trailer but again there's less wind resistance and it's much lighter so my first complaint is that it has that nice gate to use as a ramp but it's powder coated and you're going to put it right on the ground i went to lowe's and just got some grip tape and put it back there so i don't mess up the powder coating so that's my first complaint uh, the other complaint I have is that wheel chalk I spoke of earlier, and you'll get to see here that there's a lot of play. But first thing I wanted to see is, is there play because depending on where you are at on the rail, where your front tire is, maybe it's more narrow at the front and wider at the end, but that's not the case. So to simply manufacture that wheel chalk, to hit the edge or be very near to it would prevent it from the bike from shifting as I already described. So that was an issue and I thought maybe I'd just put a bushing in there. The other thing is they have this junction box for the brake lights and such, but they left the one end open. I don't understand that. I don't know that I would want water sitting in there over time. But I tried to show how the bike sits to the side if you're not centered. 
and even if you start centered again it moves as you're driving so here it's kind of centered but the video really doesn't show how much of a lean you have I'm nervous that the wheel chalk is not going to hold it on its own while I put the tie down straps on when it's shifted left or right so I went to Lowe's and got these nylon bushings they weren't they were the right size in di diameter but they were not the right size um, width wise so I just got out my handy dandy grinder and made it fit not exactly the most precise way to do it but it worked for me so you can see I put one in there and my first a uh, couple tries it didn't fit right but I eventually got it right and you can see I'm trying to move it and it's very sturdy and it's centered so now the bike will not shift that was my fix for that and regarding the open junction box I'm gonna cap that I just forgot to buy the piece but it's a great trailer I just wish grip tape isn't the best I, I should have got those rubber items that you can screw on back of gates they're almost like a I don't know how to describe it but the back of my toy hauler has them so when you set the gate down it hits this rubber piece that is bolted on the last thing I'd like to complain about is what I'm showing now is I have a lot of clearance on the one wheel but not on the other and when I tied it up it actually almost drags that one fender so I had to not really rely on that front wheel, that swivel wheel, to move it. Because if I did, occasionally my fender scrapes. But I can deal with that. So that's my review. Easy to tow. A dream to load and unload. And I would highly recommend it. And Stinger, if you're watching this, you might want to make that front chalk fit better and think about putting something on the bottom of the ramp so you don't wear that powder coating off. That's all I have for you now. Thanks for watching to the end. I have other videos regarding towing with my Tesla and I may at some point do a review on the live wire, a full review. I love the bike. It's a dream to ride. So I highly recommend it.